In this video, we're gonna be covering safety and operation of our iron worker. Just like every tool you could be using in the shop, whether it be equipment or otherwise, you need to pass a safety test with 100% and demonstrate in person in order to be able to operate. It's like anything in the shop, there's a couple of PPE items that we need to always have on. For this machine, we need to make sure we've got our safety glasses, closed toed shoes and pants. If you would like to wear some gloves, I would wear some tight fitting gloves, not required, but you're welcome to do so. Now, this machine has four different stations. We've got our shear, brake, punch, and notcher. All four of those work in unison at the same time when you hit the foot control. They all move at the same time, which can cause some safety concerns, which we'll get to. We've got our caution sticker here. This will tell you what amount of ton pressure we use. This is a 56 ton machine. Uh, it tells you the maximum flat bar capacity, which is three quarters of an inch thick by six inches wide. So if you're ever curious as to what we can cut on this, um, it's a 14 inch blade, but depending on its thickness can change whether or not this machine can cut. Now on our control panel, we've only got three buttons. It's pretty easy to operate this machine. We've got a start, stop, and a reset. Now, if you come up to the machine and you hit start and the machine starts up with a groaning, weird like dying cow sound, then hit stop, hit start again, and that should fix the problem. If not, hit reset, then start. Now, we're gonna talk about some of the safety concerns and protocols that we use on this machine to ensure we don't have any boo-boos and we keep all 10 of our booger pickers. So first we're gonna talk about this tension bar. Um, it's got two purposes. Main purpose is to secure the metal. Um, if we don't have that bar stock secured, what can happen is when we go to make this cut, this bar can lift and then slam down on the, on the table or conveyor again. And your first instinct is to sometimes try to catch it or grab it or hold it down. And that can cause your fingers to get up underneath it and really smash them or pinch them pretty good. Second purpose of the tension bar is to keep your fingers out of the blades. I mean, you can still, if you're reaching in there and you get your finger cut off, well, you don't deserve that finger. All right, but it's used to keep your finger or, or other items out of the blade when you're making a cut. Now, how tight we tighten this, we're only gonna go a smidge past snug, all right? Maybe like a quarter turn past snug. Um, if we go too tight, this all thread can strip. Um, we, don't, we don't wanna have that happen. All right, now another thing when you're sliding the bar stock in and out, sometimes we got some pretty thick stuff, uh, keep your hands on top of the bar stock. If you put your hands up underneath and you go to slide this, what can happen is you can roll your hand up underneath the flat bar against the conveyor and, and pinch your meaty bits pretty good. Now let's talk about the safety issues with all of these moving at the same time. Let me show you how it looks. Okay, when I hit the foot control, you'll see all of them are moving at the same time. We'll let that come all the way back up before we hit stop. All right, now one of the safety concerns with that where even if you're just using the shear, the punch, the notcher, all of that still work in the brake is if someone's up here talking or just hanging out, they can put their hands places that they shouldn't be and could really cause some damage here. So always on any of our equipment, never get in the habit of resting on anywhere because it could end up pitching, pinching or, or cutting you pretty good. There's some other concerns that we'll get to uh, after we make a cut. Now your first assignment is going to be a stringer bead assignment and it's a nameplate assignment, we end up calling it that too. Okay, so we're gonna measure out five inches and make our mark. You can use soapstone, a Sharpie, paint pen, um, whatever you've got to make a mark that you can see. Once we've got it 
our first mark here, we'll take our square and we'll brighten that up so we can see it good. Okay, and I want you to get in the habit of measuring, then cut. Measuring, then cut. Some kids get lazy and think, oh, I'll just measure out a whole bunch of them and then cut, cut, cut. Well, you end up being oversized or undersized. So always measure, then cut. Don't be lazy. If you need to make a whole bunch of the same length, we've got this bar on the back for repeatable cuts and you can set that up. But for your welding assignments, we're just gonna measure, cut, measure, cut. Like I said, keep your hands on top of this when we're feeding it in. Okay, sometimes it'll catch those blades. We might have to lift up just a smidge so it'll, it'll fit on top of the blade. We bring it in, we're gonna look through this mark or this gap here to find our mark. Now, we're also going to make sure that everything we cut on the shear is to the left. You're gonna push it up against this fence. This fence will make sure that we're cutting it nice and square and straight. Um, but also, there's another reason why we wanna make sure we're all the way to the left when we're making cuts on this is because you could end up damaging the blades. And a good way to think about it is if you were to try to cut this soapstone with a pair of regular scissors and you were trying to cut it out on the ends of the blades, it's not, those scissors aren't designed to cut like that. They're designed to cut on the inside, the throat of the blades so that they can do their job. Same thing with this shear. If we have our, our bar or our plate, whatever, clear out on the end versus on the inside, the inside shears, it cuts like that. When we're all the way out on the end, the blades are almost parallel and they come down and cut like that. And it just eventually ends up smashing it off. It'll make a loud bang. You'll probably drop a few drops of pee in your pants and I'll get pissed and you could damage my blades. So we always cut everything as far to the left as we can. All right, just think of Beyonce, to the left, to the left, you know, you know the song. So we've got it all the way to the left against the fence and we've got to tighten down the tension bar. Remember, we're just gonna go a little bit past tight, not Hulk tight. Okay, once we've got that snug down, we can, we're now ready to make a cut. But before you make a cut, I want you to yell out clear to let those around you know you're about to make a cut. Um, sometimes we're cutting these big long lengths and they could be hanging out there and kids could not be paying attention on their phone. And when you make a cut, that bar is gonna fall and it could land on their, their feet or what have you. But also these plates, even though this is just 3 16 thick, it's still got pretty good weight to it. So when this is cut, it slides down off this platform and falls into the bin or the concrete and chips my concrete. Or the, the safety concern is that can slide out and land on someone's tootsies. And these edges are pretty sharp and that could really ruin their day. Um, we'll talk about the sharp edges here in a sec too after I make a cut. All right, so we're gonna hit start. We're not gonna lean on anything. We're gonna hit the foot control and we're gonna yell clear. Clear! After you make a cut, let off on the foot control, wait for it to come all the way back up, then we hit stop. Now, the other safety concern with this, and probably the most common boo boo that happens in the shop, more than burns and whatnot, is these edges they are crazy sharp they're serrated and what happens is kids get to tossing these around barehanded or when they slide it out of their hand onto their workbench that sharp edge slides right along their digits or their meaty bits and it, it cuts you really good and really easy so always be careful with those edges uh, like i said you could be wearing gloves if you're worried about it but just keep in mind that those edges are super sharp. If and after you've been trained on our bench grinders or our grinders or belt sanders, you can knock those edges off.
but it's not always required to go through that extra work to do so, especially if for some of your simple welding assignments, you don't need a waste of time to do so. If you do need to use the brake, punch, or notcher, I would like you to come to me and I'll do a one-on-one -on -one personal demonstration on how to use those properly. Just as a recap, don't rest on anything. Don't over tighten this. Keep your booger pickers out of the blade. Secure the metal and yell clear so that everybody around you can hear. You're not gonna whisper it, clear. You're gonna yell it so that everyone around you can hear it. We're in a shop, it gets pretty loud. We need to make sure all of us are all aware of what's going on.